Hello everyone, I am Atheist Anime and welcome to another Bleach episode review. Today we're doing episode 2 of Shinigami's work. Roll the intro. <laughs> So, I hope you like the new intro, it's a little thing I put together, it's going to be a little while to do, um, hopefully anyway, just, I'm doing it after making this video, so hopefully it's not going to be too long, but uh, anyway, the episode begins with um, Ichigo's retarded dad, Ishin, uh, trying to jump on Ichigo while Ichigo is in his sleep. Uh, Ichigo promptly smashes him into the ground, a bit of a funny moment there, and uh, Ichigo then asks, hey wait, what about uh, Yuzu and Karin, are they okay, are they fine, with, I with uh, Ichigo sort of going, what, what are you talking about, they, they're fine. Nothing happened though, is it? We then find we then cut to outside of Ichigo's house where the rest of Ichigo's family believes that it was a truck that crashed into the house that caused all the damage. We also find out that Yuzu and Karin are perfectly fine with like, no memory of what happened last night, believing everything to be just a truck crashing into their house. Ichigo kind of wonders what the bloody hell, and then remembers the Soul Reaper, Rukia, from last night and wonders, hmm, maybe it was all her. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see, won't we? We then cut to um, Ichigo's school, with, uh, where we get introduced to Ohime and Tatsuki, two of Ichigo's fellow classmates. As they're walking along, they're talking, a bit of characters learn between two, where we find out Ohime's a bit of a weird eater. And uh, they, but they bump into Ichigo, who is very, seemingly very late for school, it being around about lunchtime for them. Uh, he, Ichigo offers to help Ohime off the floor, with Ohime kind of Nervously gets to come in, oh no, that's fine, that's fine, I, I, I've got things to do, and she probably runs away. I don't really get why she did that, it kind of, uh, yeah, I think we'll find out later why she was kind of like that. I'm sure you can guess from right right now, kind of, where that's going. Um, we then move into one of Ichigo's classrooms, where we're introduced to three of Ichigo's friends. Keigo, Mitsuru, I think that's how you say his name, it's weird, even I've watched, even after watching it a few times I still can't get his name proper, but probably, and more simply Chad, a towering student who looks like he could be in like his 20s or so. Um, but they kind of talk about Ichigo, the accident at Ichigo's house, and this is when I Rukia appears. Of course Ichigo's like, oh wait, what the fuck, that's you from last night. And the rest of them are like, oh, what the fuck are you talking about Ichigo, she's, we know, we've never met her before, she's a transfer student. Rukia is like, oh, hello everyone, I, I'm Rukia Kuchki, I'm glad to meet you all. And then, uh, oh, hello, she holds her hands up, shake it, turns it open, and we see it written on it is, cause a scene and you're dead, which probably kind of scares Ichigo a bit. Rukia gives a bit of a, like, I guess, evil smirk kind of thing, where we then cut to outside, but Ichigo's like, the fuck are you doing here? Why are you not in Soul Society? I thought that's where you, all you Soul Reapers go back to when you're done with your job. And Ruki explains she can't, only Soul Reapers can go back to Soul Society, and turns out in that in the battle last night, she lost almost all of her powers entirely, with Ichigo accidentally absorbing all of them into his body when when she gave them to him. She then explains to Ichigo that now because she's powerless, he must now take up the responsibility of being a Soul Reaper, hence the episode title Shinigami's work. Ichigo the first is it's kind of like, no, I don't want to. The only reason I did it last night is because it was my family that was in danger. I'm not really ready to go and just help complete strangers. Ruka's like, okay, no, you kind of have to. It's your job. Um, and, of course, Ichigo continues to deny this, saying, no, I don't need to. Leave me alone. Just, you can do that. I don't need to do this. Ichigo then starts to walk back to classes, where Rukia pulls out a red glove of, like, a skull marking on fire kind of tattoo. Kind of a cartoonish thing. Should be an image popping up right now. Um, and runs straight towards Ichigo, he turns around like the fuck, and uh, Rukia kind of smashes him in the chin and causes him to exit his body into his Soul Reaper cl um, clothing. Ichigo kind of promptly freaks the fuck out, like, what the fuck, why am I, what, why is my body there, why am I here? You know, that you know, whole general thing of that, like, you know, the out-of-body experience, you know, it always happens. Um, and uh, then Rukia says, come on, we have to go, I've got, I've got an orders on my Soul Pager, we don't really know what it is right now, but that, that's what it is, it's, it's the flip-up phone kind of dates the series a bit, but um, she explains that there's a soul nearby who's probably going to be attacked by a hollow, and, and speaking of the devil, there's a hollow attacking a small child. Ichigo begins to go to run off the save trial, Ruki's like, hey, what are you doing? I thought you didn't want to help strangers. And he was like, I can't just stand by and let this happen. And then Ruki explains that well, that's, not the, that's not how this works. In, in front of soul reapers, all souls are equal. You can't just save one of them because you have a reason to. 
The whole reason is that you are a soul reaper. If you're going to save one soul, you must be re willing and ready to save all souls. Ichigo then goes to attack the hollow, cuts off its two front legs. Again, I will have shown you an image of it. And then uh, turns to Rukin and says, Hey, well, what about last night then? You can't, when you went to save me and my family, you kind of seem like you were ignoring your duties. But that's because you were. Duties are the last thing you think about when you're trying to save someone. The Hollow then tries to run up to her and Ichigo, where he just turns around and just stabs it straight in the face. Of course, it's integrated into a million particles. And Ruki is just, you know, just a bit shocked. And Ichigo leaves. We then cut to Orihime's house late at night. Well, she's kind of just, I guess, doing some homework or something for school. Where we find a male soul that's kind of looming above, watching down on her. A bit mysterious, kind of creepy. <laughs> Um, and then he's attacked by two just nameless hollows. Yeah, the hollow in the, the hollow in the previous episode did have a name. I don't know it. I, well, I know it, but I can't remember it off the top of my head. It, it doesn't really matter. Things like Big D or something, I don't know, or D something. Uh, it doesn't matter. But um, he's then transported to uh, this separate, like, the hollow realm, where this large hollow, who kind of seems to have a, dis with a distinctive design about him, or he's kind of kept shrouded in the shadows for now, uh, tells other hollows to eat him, to get him, and then, of course, these hollows, do like, 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 ten hollows converge him and eat him, and then he transforms into, like, a, a snake-type, um, hollow, like, a, a body of a snake, but, like, uh, like, human arms and stuff, and, uh, kind of, like, screams of the hollow scream, and this is where the halfway point of the episode comes into. Uh, the second half begins, where we, we see e Rukia kind of reading what seems to be like Shakespearean script, saying, oh, she's just trying to learn the current language. Or Ichigo Parade is saying, yeah, you're kind of a couple centuries off. Um, Ichigo asks Rukia why she's, why she's following him, and she says she's going to continue following Ichigo until he answers his calling as a soul reaper. As the two begin to leave, they hear Orihime has been hit by a car. They go run to try and help her. And like, Orihime, you fine? You fine? She's like, oh no, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm all good. I'm all good. Rukia asks who this is. Or Ichigo goes, idiot, she's in your class. You kind of should need to know if you're going to be sticking around for this long. Uh, Rukia kind of greets her, you know, does this kind of like dress lift up, lift up thing, you know, you know, old, like a curtsy, that's what it's called. Um, if Orihime kind of just responding like, oh, yeah, sure. Um, where they, they, they talk about, and Rukia notices a strange like bruise or injury around, um, um, Orihime's leg. Ichigo just Ichigo and Orihime think it's just from the the um the car crash, but Rukia does seem noticeably worried. Ichigo asks if um Orihime does want to be walked home, and she said no, no, fine. She just promptly leaves. We then cut to Rukia and Ichigo walking along like this uh, canal, where Rukia asks uh, hey, Ichigo, what's the uh, what's your relation to Orihime? Are you um like are you friends? Like, well, what's what's kind of deal with you two? Ichigo replies saying eh, he doesn't really know her that much. She's a friend of a friend. So they they see each other. Ichigo then brings up Orihime's dead brother, who who died about three years ago, leaving Orihime with no family whatsoever. Um, Ichigo also then Ichigo also brings up here that um, he has only been recently able to see ghosts. With Rukia kind of taking this knowledge on board and going, hmm, I see. We then uh, we cut to Orihime's house where she just. Where Tatsuki's brought us some food, they just talk for a bit about the. They, they just start to talk. We cut back to Ichigo's house, where um his young sister Yuzu has just is comes into his room and asks, Hey, uh, Ichigo, one of my dresses is missing. Like, what, my pajamas are missing, and so one of my dresses. Ichigo's like, F Fuck off, I don't know what you're talking about, go away. But Yuzu brings up, Oh, you've got so much meaning since you're in high school, and he's just like, I don't know what you're fucking talking about. You know, a little bit of a funny moment there. And um, we start to hear like a, like a cell phone going up, like a phone, like, you know, you know all you, all the, you, New generation kids, a cell phone is what we used to call phones, like your iPhones and your Androids. Back in my day, <laughs> um, then we find out Ricky is in his closet, just you know, just in his wardrobe. You know, that's that's just fine. It's like Ichigo, it's a hollow. And, like Ichigo's like, what the fuck? What are you doing in there? And uh, Ricky rushes forward, like knocks him out of his body, just as that that, that snake-like hollow from before Craig uses his ability to like walk through the wall and try to punch Ichigo. Ichigo attempts to fight back as well. He does land a few good blows, but is only successful and able to slightly crack the Hollow's mask, which kind of doesn't make too much sense, I guess. But eh, I guess eh, they kind of, I guess it could be explained that this is like a recent Hollow. That, that's how it works. But um, the the fire mask cracks to reveal um, Orihime's older brother, um, who Ichigo says is his name is Sora. Kingdom Hearts fans, no, it's not that Sora. Don't worry, he's not part of Bleach. But um. 
And this is where uh, Rukio says, well, this isn't, this isn't like odd. It, uh, all Hollows used to be human souls. Ichi was like, what well, you're telling me, I've been killing human souls this whole time. Like, Rukio's like, oh, yeah, no, that's, that's like, when you get to in the Academy, like it's, uh, the, uh, back at Sorry for Academy, like, um, that you need to, the, the best way to fight Hollows is to come up from behind and get in a sneak attack in one well-placed blow so you don't see the Hollows' face, so you don't get a chance to. And uh, this does leave Ichigo a little bit shaken. Uh, we cut back to... Orihime's house where the uh, Tatsuki and Orihime are just talking about the um, accident earlier that day uh, where they start to hear crashes and rumbling everywhere you know, building up a bit of tension, oh fuck what's going on and then we get to the final shot of the episode where we find that hollow from before, you know, Sora, ho hollow Sora just looming over the house and like I said, final shot of the episode, episode ends there um, pretty interesting episode, we get a bit more insight into the workings of Soul Society like the job of Soul Reapers Kind of Ichigo's stance on doing this whole stuff, oh, this whole thing, and of course we've got the whole conflict that will be arising next episode with Orihime and her brother, and whether Ichigo's gonna be willing to kill him or not. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll see you next time. I've been Atheist Anime. Yeah, like I said, I'll see you for episode three. Goodbye. There's enough fucking shit here to give you a blooper reel. We then cut to Rukia... <laughs>